you have a basis for a vector space, well, for Rn. And if A is non-singular, then AV1, AV2, up to AVN is also a basis for Rn. Well, to show that something is a basis for Rn, you have to, sh namely this set, let us call it T, and in case I need, let's call that set S. To show that T is a vector space, sorry, is a basis for Rn, I have to show that T is a linearly independent set and that T in fact spans Rn. Now remember, A is non-singular. That is, A is invertible. So what we do is, is let's consider C1 times AV1. So suppose C1 AV1 plus C2 AV2 all the way down to C sub n AVN is zero. And if I can conclude that those coefficients are all zero, then, in fact, this set of vectors is linearly independent. But now this becomes A times C1 V1 plus this becomes A times C2 V2 this property of matrix multiplication all the way down to A times C sub n Vn equals zero. Now, the good thing is on the left side, I can now factor out the A. So this is A times C1 V1 plus C2 V2 all the way down to C n Vn and this still equals zero. Well, that's so cool that I'm even gonna write it down again. Because what's in those brackets, that sure looks like a linear combination of vectors and S. And if I can show what's inside those brackets is zero, then the coefficients have to be zero. But all I know is A times the brackets is zero. Well, on the left-hand side, on both sides, I'm going to multiply by A inverse. Then I invoke the associative law. This is A inverse A times what's in the brackets. And hopefully you see where this is going. And the right-hand side is just zero. Now that's the identity times what's in the brackets. Equals zero. Now identity times what's in the brackets is just what's in the brackets. Ah, this does equal zero. But that implies that C1 equals C2 equals Cn since S is a uh, basis for Rn that implies that S is a linearly independent set. So, okay. I guess I can say so, but I already said that these are zero. Oops, oops, equals <laughs> zero. Therefore, therefore, since these C1, C2, all the way up to Cn are all zero, therefore, AV1, AV2, all the way up to AV sub n, is a linearly independent set. So let us back box this. This is half of our proof. Now I just have to show that the vectors in T, AV1, AV2 to AVN are spans uh, Rn. 
<coughs> okay, so now let me think for a moment. Since uh, A inverse V is in Rn, that implies that there exists C1, C2, up to C sub N, such that mm, A, A inverse V is equal to C1 V1 plus C2 V2 all the way up to C sub N V N. Okay, this is just an arbitrary vector in V. Now, here's where the nice part comes in. Again, when things are really nice, you write them down twice. What I'm going to do is, on the left side, on both sides, um, I am going, so that's A inverse V. On the left side, I'm going to multiply by A. Multiply by A. So now I have A times A inverse times V is equal to, distributing to A, A times C1 V1 plus A times C2 V2 all the way down to or A times C sub N V sub N. Now this is the identity times V. Well, this is equal to C1 times A V1 plus C sub 2 times A V2 all the way down to our C sub N A times V N. And I times V is just V. Okay, so for any V, so let me just say this at the top. Let V be any vector in V. So my goal is to show that V is a linear combination of the vectors in T. Well, V is equal to C1 times the first vector in T plus C2 times the second vector in T all the way down to Cn times Avn. So yeah, I was able to write V as a linear combination of the vectors in T. So T equals or Av1 Av2 all the way down to a sub v n spans v, spans r n, excuse me. And that completes the theorem. Be okay, well, let's write it up more neatly. Ignore that for now. So I showed that t spans r n. I showed that t is a linear combination is a linear independent set so combining yields that t is a basis for rn now i can say i'm done okay so the hard part here was to realize that you needed a v, a inverse v. And the reason I knew that was right here. I wanted this to be v. Well, what do you multiply a by to get v? a inverse v. Okay, when I multiply A by A inverse V, I get back V. So I call this A inverse V. There it is, that's exactly what I did. Cause I knew when I multiplied on the left 
by uh, A, I'll just get V. And that's just what I got. When I multiplied on the left by A, I got V. So there's the motivation for that. If you just love videos like this, where I try my best to train you to think mathematically, please subscribe to my channel. If you just enjoy watching what I hope are beautiful truths, subscribe to my channel. Tell your family and friends about my channel, your teachers and classmates about my channel. Most of all, watch and learn, and I hope to see you in the next video.